Welcome everybody to It's the Freaking Batman Podcast, ladies and gentlemen. As you can tell, we are here not in my normal recording setup. We are here in the heart of Chicago. Gotham City. In Gotham City. Gotham City. Yep. The, the Dark Knight himself may show up as a special guest. I cannot, I cannot confirm or deny, but he may be showing up. Anyways, how are you doing today, No, I'm doing really good. Yes, sir. So, what is this podcast? This is going to be a new, hopefully weekly podcast where me and Noah are going to sit down, talk about our favorite crepe, caped crusader. Hold up those comics for the camera, Noah. So Hold up I these got, Well, I brought these with me mm-hmm. on the trip, but uh, I got Batman Year One and Batman The Dark Knight Returns. Uh, two of the greatest Batman comics. Absolutely. And I'm rocking the Batman hoodie, so it's safe to say we are both major Batman fans. And I'm rocking the Marvel hoodie. Yup. Yup. So. That's definitely Batman. <laughs> yep. And this is our favorite character in Batman right here. Yep. Yep. His name is Bruce. And bits. this is our favorite uh, Justice League character as well. Yes. Yep. Yes. Yep. So anyways, uh, this podcast is special this week, obviously, because we are in person. We are not virtual. Um, and we're going to talk more about that stuff in the our, or other normal podcast. So this is just more for our more superhero audience. And we love talking about superheroes. But anyways, so we've been talking about it on the other podcast for the last six weeks at this point. But the Penguin. The Penguin has been incredible. If anybody doesn't know, somehow, if you don't know, if you're watching this podcast, I'm assuming you do if you're watching this podcast. Yeah. Uh, But The Penguin is a new HBO Max show that is being created as a basically extended media in the Batman Matt Reeves universe. Yeah, the the Batman Epic Crime Saga is what it's called. Yes. Yep. So um, The Penguin has been going on for the past, what, seven weeks? Seven weeks now. Um, and we've we've had the lucky chance to well, I mean nothing nothing exclusive, but <laughs> we've had the chance to watch it as it's been coming out every week, mm-hmm. um, and we think it's phenomenal. Yeah, it's like, like really good. I don't know about like best comic book show ever. Maybe, maybe. Um, I don't know if it quite beats Daredevil. That's fair for me personally. Yeah, but, absolutely. Uh, but it's definitely really shows world building in Gotham, the Matt Reeves Gotham. Yes. Um, that we saw started out in the Batman. And um, I personally just really think it dives deep into Oz's character. I really like that mm-hmm. a lot. It's really character-driven. It's really good. Yeah, and uh, I, we've, we said this weeks ago, but it's basically Batman Sopranos. Yeah. And, and when I say that, that's an absolute compliment. Um, you know, some people say that is a mean thing. No, like The Sopranos is top three television shows of all time. Like, that's, like, basically undisputed, right? Like, it's basically one of those things, like, where you can put your top three together, and typically somebody's going to put The Sopranos on their list, right? So, it's really good in that aspect, and just heads up, we're going to give our general thoughts on the show so far uh, before we hop into spoiler talk, because we've been avoiding that on the other podcast. So, just fair warning, but if you haven't started it yet, start it. The finale is this Sunday. Yes. And it's really good. And what's really nice, too, is that they're not doing this thing where you need to watch this to understand part two. They're not doing... uh, Debatable, you could watch this without watching the Batman, too. Oh, yeah. yeah. They they barely even mentioned... Actually, they haven't even mentioned the Batman at all. Yeah, the Um, only thing they mentioned is the Riddler, and they explain what he did in the show. And they show it, too. Exactly. Well, yeah, yeah, exactly. Perspective. And, of course, they have Falcone. Mm -hmm. He died in the Batman, so... Yep. Yeah, so this is also going to help close the gap between the Batman Part 1 and the Batman Part 2, which we're also going to talk about in this video, but anyway. It's going to start ramping up into winter. Uh, Yes. uh, I I think we're going to get a a winter setting in uh, the Batman Part 2. Which I think is fantastic. I would really like... Mr. Freeze. I don't think we're going to get that in this universe, maybe, but we'll talk about that like in probably 20 minutes. Uh, but anyways, I just I just want to say Oz in this show, like, hands down, is the best penguin we've gotten. I think oh, yeah. that as a penguin, yes. he is just perfect. Like, yep. 
you know, there were some people that were upset about his slight name change. People were upset that he doesn't have the monocle. But, like, the thing is, is that... But, yeah, no, like, I, I think that he really does... Like, he, he's had his limp. He's had his aesthetic, right? And I think that, like... And first of all, you don't need to have something that's 100% comic accurate to be fantastic, right? And, I, and I'm just going to take this for... I'm just going to hold it up for the camera. Yeah. This comic here, right... At the time, wasn't necessarily comic accurate to the previous Batman's we've had. Exactly, and it went on to create the the, the basic, uh, essential what what we think of Batman, right? Yep. So that's just a prime example of once again what happens here, and and you know there are some things where if they change a character. I'm not a big fan of it. We've talked about it with BVS, and we're going to talk about it in a different podcast. Yeah, and and like. There is a reason to be upset about some changes, but also, like, understand why other changes are being made. Like, this is a very grounded universe. If if you've seen this Oz on the news, you'd be like, oh, fuck. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like absolutely. Like, yeah. if you, like, you would, that's a crime boss, you know? And the traditional look of Penguin is almost like a ripoff of the Monopoly Man, kind of. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's, yeah. you know, yeah. but, in yeah. In a way. I think that the aesthetic of the show is fantastic. The writing is fantastic, which will, you know, but, yeah. So, what do you think about the aesthetic so far? It's great. It um, while we don't have the quite as good of a cinematography as right. the Batman I do think it, it looks really good. <clears throat> Everything is shot well. It's, yeah, it, it's a high, it's high budget. You know, you can tell that they really cared about it. Absolutely. Unlike a few other comic book shows that have come mm-hmm. out in the past few years, um, <laughs> we'll name them. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I, I do think that it looks good. I think yes. it's very acted well. I think, that, and this is my take. You don't have to agree with me. But I really do think that Colin Farrell is to the Penguin as Heath Ledger is to the Joker. I agree with you. I, I really think that he his performance is really good. Yep. You can't even tell it's him. Oh, dude. It's a, have you yeah. seen what... Sorry. You, just, have you yeah. seen what Kristen Milioti said about about that? No. Um, she, when she first saw him in the makeup, or, or it could have been somebody else, mm-hmm. but or was it Jeffrey Wright? I can't remember. But basically, they saw him in the makeup for the first time. Yeah. And they had no idea that it was him. And he started talking. And then um, I think it was Jeffrey Wright. And he was like, wait, is that you? Collins under there? <laughs> and then uh, and then he was like, yeah, it's me. And it was like, what the hell? Yeah, no, it's like, <laughs> it, yeah. And like, I remember when we talked about it, like right before the Penguin started was, oh, the makeup's like worse quality than what it was in the film. And, like, you don't notice. Like, you really yeah. don't, you know? Yeah. I, and you could probably pull up some frames and be like, oh, look, you can notice here. Well, I think it's because it's a TV show. Right, exactly. And make it more comfortable for him for longer shoots. Absolutely. And and he played such a little part compared to the Riddler. He played such a little part in that film. Like, he was sort of... I think he's going to be a main villain in this coming movie, but we'll talk about why. Um, but yeah, and in, in, in a way, I just want to go back just a tiny bit that we talked about sort of like how this um, show isn't necessarily turning him into the villain, which is true. We've already seen that with the Iceberg Lounge in the first movie. I think with what's going to happen in this next episode, we're really going to see an even more darker penguin. For sure, because we've seen in the set photos, he's going to get that top hat. Yeah. He's he, He's gonna he's gonna go get his mom. He, absolutely, he's gonna go get his mom. Either they're gonna kill his mom. Something's gonna happen with his mom. I think and, I uh, think she's gonna die. I maybe maybe. Yeah. I, I mean I think that they like we talked about. This is not required reading material for part two. Mm-hmm. So I don't think they really. I don't think that we're gonna see like nearly any mentions of this in the movie. Yeah. But I think it'd be cool if we have let's say Sophia kills his mom. Right, and we sort of have a penguin versus Sophia Falcone sort of like dichotomy in the movie. Yeah. That would be incredible. I don't think they're going to do that because they. I think that they really want to keep this separate. But I would fucking love that. I think yeah. that would be incredible. Maybe see a, a gang war. Yes. happening between oh, dude. Gigante and oh. Cobb. Yes, families. That, that would. Be, uh, <laughs> That would be pretty cool. I would during the Batman Part Two. Yeah, I kind of like how we saw with um, Falcone versus mm-hmm. uh, uh, Maroni's. Maroni's. Oh, Mar- oh yeah, Maroni. Yeah. Fucking Maroni's. 
<laughs> like he does that throughout the show where he doesn't refer to refer to him as the Maron Maronis. I think he almost only exclusively refers to them as the fucking Maronis, and it's the fucking Maronis. It's so good. You want to you want to work with the fucking Maronis? It's so good. Though. There's only one bit man big enough to run this city. <laughs> yeah. So. There's a character that we haven't talked about because we basically didn't see him in this episode. Victor. Uh, he's, at the, he's at the beginning. Uh, well, that's that's it. That one scene, and that's it for him. Uh, Vic, give me an army. I don't care. <laughs> right here. Go give me an army. I don't care. Fuck your guilt. I don't care. Fuck your guilt. Just find, give me an army. Yeah. Uh, Vic... And when I say that he wasn't in this episode, that's not a diss. There, there was other stuff that happened. And clearly next episode is going to be a long episode. Yeah. And, like, yeah. So, um, but Vic has been a great character all season. And I think that the transformation that we've seen from the start of this season to now has been incredible. Vic started out as a little... I say this because I'm pretty sure they call him this in the show. He starts out as a little hood rat, stealing fucking, you know, people's tires and shit. Yep. Like doing... And he picks the wrong car. He, <laughs> yeah, that's how this whole thing... That's how this whole show... Yep. Like, is is just... Like, that first episode is incredible. Like... Yep. Um, he tries to steal the Penguin's tires. The Penguin's are like, all right, you're going to fucking... All right, you're going to help me move this fucking body. And then he's going to murder Vic. And then Vic convinces him, let me work for you. And he's like, well, I guess you can't talk to the police. Um, and he's just been great all this season, especially in the start of the season. He was very much the new kid on the block. Yep. And now it's like much more experienced. Absolutely. In episode six, he kills somebody. Yep. And like in an awful way too. like um, basically he's back in his old hood. And the old uh, gang member is he is pressing him. And he's like, hey, take me back to Oz. I know that he's here. I know that you're working for him. Like, we want to get in on this. Yeah. And he's like, uh, nope. Can't do that. Can't do that. And he fucking shoots him in the throat. Yep. And like, oh, what a, what a crazy, like, mm-hmm. this show is just a giant roller coaster. It was, was the best mm-hmm. part about Vic yeah. for me. Is that he could have easily been a really bad character. Oh, for sure. But they, they really tried to make him good, and I liked that a lot. I think that they did a really good job by introducing that sort of, like, love interest of his. Mm-hmm. I think that was really good to sort of... And his parents, too. I think showing his family dynamic really early on, too, was really good. And I've talked about this, too. There's one exception to this that we're going to talk about. Is the writing in this show is fantastic. Oh. Well, the pacing. Um, it's only not bad, but it's just a little filler in episode seven, which we're going to talk about in just a little bit. Well, not filler, but just nothing happens. And, you know, and, and there was a, one moment, I think it's like episode three, where they tell Vic's backstory. And immediately they show us Vic's backstory in less than five minutes. And it's concise and, we, and everybody understood it. It wasn't in a last of a situation where we spent all episode oh, yeah. with... They did that twice in The Last of Us. And one of them was really good. Like the episode with, uh, I don't remember the actor's name, but he's from uh, Parks and Rec. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That episode's great. And that whole episode, we stick with two characters. That episode's fantastic, but it doesn't really move the plot along. Right. The Penguin, on the other hand, we tell Vic's story, we tell his girlfriend's story, we tell his parents' story, and we understand why Vic is in the place where he's at. And we tell him less than five minutes. And it does it in a really nice, concise way that never left me with questions about his past. Right. And they could have, like you said, they could have easily just made it a full, a full episode. A full episode. Which... Where they fucking go out to the movies or something. Would have been a horrible... Oh, it would have been awful. I mean, <laughs> it probably still would have been an okay episode, yeah. but it's just... Like, it, 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 would, be, it would leave me saying, why... Why yeah, you just waste a bunch of time. Yep, it, it's know? it's an issue that a lot of shows have now, where they do this thing where they go, okay, so we have an episode with a backstory. We're gonna spend all episode with these two characters going to them. Just as an example, they go out to dinner or something. We find out about their relationship. Okay, cool. We found out about Vic and his. I don't remember her name, uh, but we find out about I forgot her name too, like Stephanie or something. I uh, think that's right. Yeah, we're gonna go with that. You know. We figure out that backstory, and you know, like I said, really fast, and then it carries on in the next episode, which we'll talk about. In but yeah, uh, episode seven is still really good. 
me and Noah said this like as soon as we finished it for being the worst episode that was still fantastic yeah yeah I and mean, not to say nothing happened yeah I just feel like more could have happened for sure like we we definitely got our, our cliffhanger ending yep and we got uh Sal Maroney he, yep. he bit the Sal dust Maroney died uh and then we have um Oz's backstory uh oh we got Oz's backstory of course uh, we got Rex Calabrese. We got to mm-hmm. look at him. Yep. We also got um, uh, what's her name? What's his mom's name? Uh, what is her name? <sighs> She's got an old Italian name. Gia. That sounds right. Something like that. She's got an old Italian name. Well, she was talking to Sophia, and that was a really yes. good interaction. I thought that I thought was a really good scene, and seeing yeah. Sophia's reaction to be like, "Oh shit, she's got Alzheimer's," was like, "Yep, yep." And can we like side note? Mm-hmm. I think Sophia Falcone is probably, like great, great performance, I, great character. Oh, love, dude, I love everything about it. I really hope they bring her into season, uh, um, not season. Two, I really hope she two. doesn't die. I know because like Sophia Falcone. And we don't have it sitting here, but is like such an interesting character in the Long Halloween. Okay. And like, she plays a crucial role in the I Long Halloween. Could have brought that, but I didn't. It, no, that's fine. Um, she plays a crucial role in Hot Long Halloween, and that's what the show is kind of based off of. Not entirely, obviously, but like sort of the the premise. And I think that her and Batman could have a really interesting sort of. She could be a really interesting sort of villain. Not necessarily. She doesn't need to be the main villain, but as a side villain. I think she'd be fucking fantastic. I just also find her as a really, really fascinating character. So, you know. Um, this, and is, uh, this is her in the comics. Yes. Yeah, she's uh, really, really, really tall. tall. Like huge. Yep. Uh, here, I'll show both cameras. Yep, there you go. Perfect. There you go. Yep. She's uh, Real, real tall. That's why she's called Sophia Gigante. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no. Gigante. No. But, uh, yeah, no, I, she's been, like, fantastic this whole season. And she's, like, especially her episode where we got her backstory, that episode was, that episode might be my favorite. I love that episode. Like... Yeah, it's the it's one of the highest rated episodes of television. On the IM, IMBD. I am I deserve it. D B B D. Yeah, yeah. I think it's B D, right? I maybe I don't know, but yeah, no. That episode, it, it it's oddly scary. Like it's it's almost like you're watching well, almost like a psychological like horror film. Yep. And you it's, get to see her descent into insanity. Absolutely, absolutely. And and like I just think like near the uh, like and just the evil shit that they that they really show. Like at the beginning of her, the, that episode, her dad's like, "Oh yeah, you're my favorite." Like clearly making it obvious that she's the favorite child, and sort of like what he sees in her. Mm-hmm. And then she makes one mistake, and he goes, "Oh man, it looks like you're going insane." On yep, you. looks like you're insane. Yeah, and the way that he like. I, I don't like this word a ton, but, like, the way that he gaslights her is, yeah. like, incredible. Like, he, like, immediately, because, like, obviously from the previews we and from the story, too, we knew that she went to Arkham. Yeah. And, like, immediately he goes, I think, I think you're mentally unwell. And it's like, holy shit. Like, <laughs> yeah, and it's also uh, because she uh, said that to, she said to Penguin, uh, don't talk to me or something yep. like you don't pretend like you uh, like you care like you care and then that's what that's what made him mad so he went and told yep because she's uh, like you're just my driver yep and yep. then she went and then he went and told Carmine mm-hmm. that that she was talking to a reporter and then that pissed him off and uh, Penguin is in fact a rat yeah he is he's, he's a rat throughout this whole show and just like we didn't even mention it but he he even kills his own fucking brothers. I ain't no rat. I ain't, <laughs> I ain't no rat. <laughs> I ain't no fucking rat. Or, I don't know why I said it like that, but <laughs> yeah, no, like just this show has been a roller coaster the whole time. If you somehow haven't started it, start it. One thing that I've been talking about too is I am so sick of sh- streaming services dropping shows all at once. I fucking hate it. I hate it because uh, we've been watching Squid Games slowly over here. And that's one of those shows that drop on Netflix all at once. And the first episode gets to the point eventually, but they do this thing where they treat these seasons like just long movies, which, okay, fine. But, like, the Penguin's writing is structured perfectly. I think it also has to do, and I think, well, not it has to do, but 
Squid Game, mm-hmm. right? Now, you know what the second season's called? Oh, is it called? Squid Game 2. Like as if it's a movie. Right, you know? right. So, there's that. So, it basically is a long movie. Yeah. Um, just split up into parts. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. But Do you want to move on to our next topic? Yeah. Uh, well, we have... The next topic is the Batman 2 speculation. Yes. So, what do you think is going to happen in the Batman Part 2? So, I've thought about this a lot. And I think that I would really, really, really like to introduce a Two-Face in this universe. I think yeah, because a lot of people have said they want Killer Croc. Oh. Clayface was a speculation, too. Here's I think that th- was confirmed. I don't know. Is Clayface okay. confirmed? I uh, thought Clayface let me, was... Let me look it up. Yeah. Up. So my only issue with the Clayface prediction is Matt Reeves has made a very grounded universe. We've seen that with everything in like when you look at the dark knight the dark knight is is still a comic book movie at heart if you look at this batman this batman could be real uh like his gadgets um like his his body type his batmobile like all that stuff is pretty realistic and i just don't know if they want to be like okay we're going to cover something a bit more comic booky and do a clay face so something it's heavily rumored it's not confirmed not confirmed okay i'm still down for a clay face yeah but i think personally that matt reeves is going for a very grounded realistic universe yeah so it wouldn't surprise me if we stick to people like two-face two-face would work i another one i would like which i don't think is going to happen i think poison ivy in this universe would be cool like just kind of with the aesthetic that we're going for i think that would look because we've only gotten her in one other live action movie True, and but she sucked. <laughs> yeah, I think what he's trying to go for, like, mm-hmm. think about any Batman villain. Yeah, and think about like Two Face. That that would be grounded because yep. it's it's kind of part of crime because yep. he's a lawyer and then he turns into a criminal. Mm-hmm. Um, that would work perfectly. Yeah. Now, in a winter setting. I mean, Mr. Freeze, he doesn't really have to do with the crime. No. Bit that, that, that much. No, not really. I no, mean... Because it's called the Batman Epic Crime Saga. Yeah. So, taking that, I don't know if Mr. Freeze or Poison Ivy... No. Or Bane... Maybe Bane. Maybe they could do something cool. With they could do something kind of like uh, The Dark Knight uh, Rises with that. Yeah, maybe. Rise, because Rises is kind of made him more of a crime boss kind of character. But something you notice, all three of the people... In his rogues that he's yes uh, in that he introduced in the first movie before well, I should say yeah um, have to do with crime because yep. Catwoman's a thief yep um, Riddler's Riddler, a murderer he meant Riddler's a murderer but and he kind of tweaked him a little bit yeah he did because he can be grounded yeah um, for sure and then he introduced the Joker Joker he's a criminal yeah conference of crime um, and then who am I who am I missing oh the Penguin. Penguin he's a crime boss yeah and. Falcons, but well, yeah, Falcon, but same thing. Um, yeah, I I would like an uh, I would really really like a Mister Freeze, but like you said, he's not really he's not about the crime. He's more about um, let me let me uh, unfreeze my wife. Exactly, exactly. Um, and Poison Ivy, she's more like okay, protect the plants at any cost. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, let me think here. What other villains? Like Clayface does would maybe work. No, I don't know he doesn't. That. He doesn't really. I, I can't think of a. Yeah, Firefly. I don't know if that would work either. Firefly, I think, could be cool if you think of it from like the arson perspective. Maybe, but maybe I, maybe he's burning down buildings. Exactly, maybe he's just crazy. And he's yeah, burning down. maybe that that could work. I I like Firefly, and I wish that a movie would give him a chance. Uh, I'm trying to think of any other characters that we. That we are, haven't mentioned yet. Um, well, Killer Croc probably wouldn't work. No, Killer Croc, I don't think would be one. That's one where I'm this like, this is from the hypotheticals perspective. Like, we're not trying to like, yeah, yeah. This is like, this is not like us saying, oh, this is the objective opinion. Yeah, no, this, uh, is, this is just what I think is exactly be. with our knowledge. Um, like, Hush? I would love Mister Freeze if it happened. Do we think Hush? That's a good idea. What about I Deadshot? Think- Deadshot, maybe. Be, I, the only reason I have to say that maybe because... Maybe he could be a side character. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Deathstroke, maybe. Deathstroke, yep. Like, at, all those guys that you mentioned there are pretty mm-hmm. grounded, but I, I don't know if... Like, I know Hush would probably work. There's a lot of hinting towards them doing Hush. 
the only reason I think the the issue is is that I feel like the Riddler, they sort of took the Riddler and wrapped them up in multiple characters. They took his basic principle of I like to give riddles, mixed it with sort of um, you know obviously he didn't take their faces, but sort of mutilating them and torturing them in a sense like Hush. And then also, like Victor Zaz, he's just a fucking crazy serial Zaz. killer. I don't think they're going to do Zaz. I think that they already did that with Riddler. Like, this Riddler is kind of similar to Zaz, is the issue. True, and, he's, and they, they kind of made it more similar to uh, the Zodiac Killer. Absolutely. That's that was sort a, of... That was a clear inspiration, he said. 100%. Uh, so, I would love Zaz. Zaz is, like, my favorite villain of all time. But I don't think, unfortunately, he he's, pro- he's top three for me top three who's your top one top one is joker of course just because like they like and we're going to talk about this considering this is going to be a, a non-going podcast yeah is i there's some joker stories i love right like the killing joke is a fantastic example right like mm-hmm. the or, or or you know death in the family death of the family right like you have these stories where he is just fucking crazy yeah. And then you have some more silly stories, too, that are still really good. You should check out White Knight. I should. Uh, yeah, I don't that, know about that, White Knight. That one, I haven't read it, but mm-hmm. that one seems like you would probably really like it. Okay. Um, because it shows him being, like, sane. He was cured of his insanity. Oh, oh, I do know this one. I haven't read it, but I know about it. So, yeah, absolutely. I will check that one out. Um, but, yeah, no, I, I'm really interested, too, to see. I don't know if they're going to use Save Joker for Part 3. Or they're going to unleash him in part two. Wait, there's one that I haven't even gotten to. Go for Scarecrow. it. Scarecrow. I so I would love Scarecrow, but I'm trying to think from a cri- from a crime angle. Maybe and somebody said maybe it was you that said this, but I, I think I might have saw it on Twitter. I'm not mm-hmm. sure, but uh, somebody said that Bliss could be the start of. Uh, oh, how he makes his. Yeah, I think that was Twitter. Yep. Mm-hmm. Maybe he's just a drug dealer. Maybe that's how. Yeah. He it. Maybe he makes a drug empire. And, yeah, uh, and then he tries to like, like overdose Batman or something. That that I think could be cool, and I would like that, and that is a good theory because because let's be let's let's also be clear here with what Matt Reeves is doing because he's new he's not necessarily he's staying true to their characters but he's not doing comic accurate so that's a really good idea that could turn him into a drug dealer actually that's a good theory. Wow, it, it's possible. Because when we, because when, when Noah first brought that to me, I was like, I don't know about that. But then I, kind of, but now that you kind of put it in that perspective, I'm like, you know what? Yeah, that could work because that's something we haven't really seen yet mm-hmm. in the Batman. Well, we've seen True. drops, but we haven't. We've seen drops. We've seen bliss. Right. But from a more crime boss perspective, for sure. Um, yeah. Somebody so, that wants to commit more. Did than, you hear that? Yes, I did. We're fine because I have the other one rolling still. Okay. Um, but yeah. Uh, so, okay, well, that, that might, if they do that, I know, I know for, like, I don't know for a fact, but I know I have, like, a strong feeling that they're going to do Two-Face. Because they got to. fit right in. Oh, he would, he would be perfect. Even if they don't necessarily introduce Two-Face, if they introduce Har- Harvey Dent. Yeah. Then, uh, then we will know we will eventually get to it. Yes. Maybe in a TV show. I think, you know what? That would be really cool. I agree with that. Imagine it turns it turns from a legal drama to a like an epic crime show. Mm-hmm. Oh man, that's, mm-hmm. that's so good. Oh, dude, an epic. Oh my god, so so good. But he did say that the, the incoming shows are all going to be character driven. Yeah. So I don't think we're going to get anything like the GCPD. No, or probably like not. The Asylum one. So I think he's taking the the good reception from the Penguin and turning it into an actual. Uh, like this is how we're going to do yeah. shows from now on. So, which I'm glad with. I really, really like the direction that we're heading in this universe. I think that it's, and to think like we're still pretty early on in this universe. Like we don't even have part two yet, and it's not going to come out for a couple more years. You know, like because what it's slated for what 2026. Yeah, we got a long time. We yeah. got a lot of episodes up until then. We got a lot of episodes up until then. Two years worth. We got a lot of comics, video games, movies, TV shows to talk about. Oh. I know. It's 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 like, and this is a, something that's been going on since for decades. So, and new stuff is coming out right now. <laughs> yeah. What? And that's a good segue. That is a good segue. Uh, new stuff in the form of a comic book that I read. You haven't read it yet. Nope. Uh, and it's 
uh, I've heard it's fantastic. Love it so much. It's called Absolute Batman. Absolute Batman. Um, Number two is going to come out next week. I'm going to get my hands out on that one next week. Um, And side note, Absolute Wonder Woman number one is also fantastic. Go read that, but we're not talking about Wonder Woman. Mm -hmm. Um, Absolute Batman number one. He is not a billionaire. He grew up in Crime Alley. He's a bodybuilder. He works in construction. And uh, he's he fights crime at night. Yeah. And, um, yeah, his, uh, his I love the Batmobile. <laughs> the Batmobile is a huge yeah. fucking dump truck. It's great. Uh, and his weapons, he can take his ears off and make and their knives. And the way they explain the no killing is he nicks, he, like, goes around and he yeah. barely misses the arteries. That's sick. That's what... And Alfred, by the way, he's a super spy. Ooh. Not super. He's a spy. Uh, he's a British spy that's... Uh, sent to that's spying sent on to Batman. spy on Batman. Yep. And fight him. <laughs> that's cool. And Batman that's basically cool. takes his gun, I think, and then modifies it. Oh, okay. Got, yeah, I think that's what I remember reading. I read it, like, a long time ago. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, it was, it was awesome. Um, yeah, his cape... I don't know what they're called, but like he can use his cape as like a, like a oh uh, like like a kind of blinding thing. Well, not just oh. that. It has like little ah uh, fuck. What are they? I get I, I don't know weaponized tassels. Mm. And he like he can like grapple onto somebody's neck and pull them down. Like it's like a Ooh. Whip almost. It's like a like a whip in a way. Yeah. Uh, and it's really cool. Yeah. Uh, and okay. then his chest emblem, he can take it off, and then it just, it like goes into an axe. That's really cool. It's, yeah. Yeah. He's this is this Batman is awesome, and I can see them already. I can see this influencing Batman comics for years to come. And yeah, it sold out first printing, second wow. printing. It's getting a third printing. That's crazy. Why When's the last a, time that might even happened. get a fourth print? Wow, I don't know. I don't know if it's last time. Right, right. But uh, it is fantastic, and I can't wait for the second yeah. second issue. And I and I talked about this. I'm fine with a violent Batman. As long as we try to find a way to justify how he's still not breaking his no-kill rule. Right. And that's part of my issue with BVS, but that's not for today's video. But, yeah, I like that idea of being like, okay, so he still uses weapons, Mm -hmm. but he doesn't fucking, you know... Yeah, he doesn't use guns. Yeah, yeah. Well, he kind of... Not really, but... But is it like... uh, He just steals Alfred's gun. Okay. That's all that that happens. Oh, yeah, that's different. It's not like, you know, stealing a gun and... I mean, he he does it here. <laughs> yeah, could I also mention that uh, mm-hmm. his mom's still alive? Oh, okay. Okay. And at the end of the issue, they tease the Joker. This Ooh. version, this universe's Joker. Okay. Imagine if the Joker is like super rich and is like. I think that's what the direction. Mm. I think so. Uh, we we'll, we will find out more next week, next okay. week. Absolutely. So, guys, tune in next week for my thoughts on yeah. issue number two. Hell yeah. Um, and as the trades come out, I strongly suggest you get the trade paperbacks as they come out. The trade? What's trades? Trades are like this. Oh, like, okay. Like the first five issues are probably going to... Well, I don't know how DC does it, mm-hmm. but the way Marvel does it is whenever the first five issues are coming out, they already kind of have like, okay, this is going to be volume one. Mm-hmm. You know? So maybe they'll do that for absolute okay. And if they do... Okay. Strongly suggest yeah. right. doing that. Yeah, for sure. So, uh, do we got anything else to talk about that's been going on uh, in the world? Dynamic now? duo? Yeah, let's talk about it. So, <laughs> I, I, I don't really know much about this. James so. Gunn and Matt Reeves, they have teamed up uh, their production companies to make yes. a movie about Dick Grayson and Jason mm-hmm. Todd um, fighting crime together. And I don't think it's Batman. I don't think, I don't think Batman's going to be in it, but they're Batman characters, so I yeah. think we should talk about it. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I, I've, uh, I enjoy Rob. Obviously, I love Nightwing. And, um, obviously, this isn't, this isn't necessarily Nightwing, uh, but I am excited to see this. Is Matt Reeves directing it, then? Is that what's no, going on? No, they're, they're both producing it. They're just I don't know perfect. who's directing it. Okay. It's not going to be part of either of the Right, conversions. right. It's, it's separate. Yeah. yeah, okay. And it's also going to be animated. It's, also, it's going to feature mm-hmm. multiple different animation styles, including stop motion. DC is already winning at 
the universe is right now. Yeah, like, like on you paper, won't, you won't see anything from Marvel on this. No, <laughs> like, <laughs> like on this happen at Marvel. Like I will put my fucking foot in my mouth if these movies end up being bad. But right now, dude, on paper, DC is the place to go. Yeah, like, if you want good like cinematic content for comics, maybe well, the that's com- fair. For that's comics, fair. I'd say Marvel's in that's a fair position. Yeah, uh, but but TV and movie wise, TV and movie wise. <sighs> DC's killing it. Oh yeah, yeah, yep. I I am excited to see that dynamic because, I mean, we could get a dark Jason Todd that murders people, or we could get a more laid back Jason Todd. So I'm excited. Um, I could pull up more about this if you want me to. Yeah, go for it. See if, uh, yeah, see if we got a bunch of info or anything. Then, uh, while I'm there, I'm also going to see what else we have on the topic. For sure, for uh, sure. There is one other thing that I'll mm-hmm. get to that soon. Okay. Yeah. So. But yeah, once again, check out The Penguin if you haven't watched it. Uh, I know that some people are waiting to binge it. I think the show works better weekly to weekly personally, but I totally get it. If some people like to binge, I get it. So, but yeah, you know, uh, once again, this is going to be our weekly podcast where we sit down and talk about all new things Batman, old things Batman, whatever. And also, while I was pulling this up, you can go down in the description, buy yourself some W Energy, either with a link in our description, or you can use code SIGMA934 for 10% off of anything on their website. That includes all these flavors that you see here. This also includes the hydration formula that is right here. Noah had it. He was a pretty big fan of it. Uh, it's caffeine-free, sugar-free, jitterless energy without, you know, without, if you're somebody that doesn't drink caffeine, you don't need to worry about it. So, you get, all right, let's hear it. So, um... Basically, it's called the technology that they're using to make it is called Momo Animation. Okay. Uh, which is a cross between CGI animation, practical yeah. elements of stop motion, and live action real time performance. Okay. The ro- result is long form storytelling built as visually breathtaking, dynamically expressive, and more human. That's going to be a really interesting dynamic, I think, between the two animation styles. Um, I can't find anything. Oh, wait. Uh, okay, it follows the early days of Dick Grayson and Jason Todd, a.k.a. Okay. the Romans. So, um, Arthur Mintz is going to be the director. Uh, what has he done? I have no idea. I'm going to look okay. it up right now. No <clears throat> uh, I think this is the first thing. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, his first... Uh, project. Has, okay, has he produced anything or anything like that, or like? Uh, he's the co-CEO of Swaybox Studios. Oh, okay. So he's like, okay, so he's like an animation guy. Yeah. So he's, okay. Yeah, he's an animator. Okay. Cool. Very cool. Um, the other thing that I have, li- and I mean, we could talk more about it, but there's not much to talk about. Mm-hmm. All right. But um, this last thing is my thoughts on Joker. Mm. The movie. Yeah. So. I will preface this before we start talking about it. I've not seen it. Yeah. I'm not spending the $25 for a movie that I don't think that I'm going to like when that I know is coming to Mac soon. I want to preface that. What I will say from an outsider's perspective, I'm not complaining that it's a musical. I want to make that clear because some people complain just because it's a musical. Yep. The trailers made that clear. That's not my complaint. My complaint has to do with Todd Phillips. Look, no one knows this. I, Tom, Todd Phillips films are kind of my guilty pleasure movies. Yeah. I enjoy the Hangover movies. I enjoy Road Trip. He's made some... He's actually... Due date. Due date. <laughs> yep. Like, he's made some guilty pleasure comedies that I enjoy. From an outsider's perspective, I don't think I'm going to like The Joker too. I just think that he's made... The Joker is like his real first success. Like, critics-wise. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, he's always made money with the Hangover trilogy. But this was like his first movie where people were like, wow, this is actually really good. And from an outsider's perspective, where I see what he's been doing online, seeing how he's been reacting to feedback from other people, like James Gunn, and even how he reacted to feedback in when, he, when they made the first movie, right? He just seems a little arrogant and cocky about it. But I want to hear Noah's opinion. That, I just want to get that out there because I'm not going to share too much here because Noah's seen the movie. So go for it. Share your thoughts. So... Um I don't want to beat around the bush, but I really loved it. Yeah. Uh, so that's my first thing I want to say yep. is um, I really think that it really continued the story of the first mm-hmm. movie uh, in a really good way because it starts out you see a, you see an animation it's like Looney Tunes animation 
of him and his shadow. Yeah. So basically, as you know, in the first movie, he he killed um, he killed uh, what's his name. Uh, it's been a while. <laughs> Murray, Fra- Murray Frank. <laughs> yes. He killed Murray Franklin on live television. Yes. And in the sequel, they mentioned how they made so many TV movies about about that. Right. Um, and uh, and they kind of used that as like the first movie is the TV movie. Mm-hmm. And Harley, when she visits him, well, not visits him, she meets him in Arkham. Yeah. Uh, she mentions how she saw it. She watched it like 10 times. It's like her favorite movie. She's a doctor she's in this like, still, right? Mm, sort of. Okay. So she's a, she's a, she is a psychologist. Psychologist, yeah. Whatever. Psychologist. Yeah. She checked herself into Arkham just to meet him. Mm, okay, okay. Just to meet him yep. and manipulate him into being the Joker. Yeah, okay. Um, and she does not give a shit about Ar- Arthur Fleck at all. Right. And that's kind of the right. driving force about this movie mm-hmm. is he thinks that he's falling in love, which he is falling in love, but she is manipulating him into being the Joker because she right. wants she wants him to be the right. crime of crime. Mm-hmm. And the thing about the first movie is Todd Phillips, he wanted it to be more of like a origin of the idea of Joker, not the origin of Joker. Right. Mm-hmm. Um so he's it's more like okay so who did who did uh, Heath Ledger's Joker watch on TV when he was a kid that right. made him want to be this right. persona in the mm-hmm. future um, so I think that really works because the first movie everybody treated it as if he was the actual Joker right, right at the end of the movie because it's like holy shit so um, I, I think that they really made Harley represent the audience. Yeah. Like, forcing him to be something he's clearly not. For sure. Because if you thought that this Joker was going to fight Batman... That I... You're a fucking idiot. That I completely agree with. (laughs) That I agree with. People that were like, no, I wanted this to be the Joker. No. No. Like, there's a... Like... Like, there's kind of a reason that he's Arthur. You know? Like, like... Like, I do agree with that. Like, yeah, if you think that this was going to be the Joker that was going to fight Batman, <laughs> what no. the fuck are you on about, dude? Anyway. Yeah, can, no. That's not... No. Yeah. We also get Harvey Dent in this movie. Oh, okay. Um, he's the lawyer that's, um, that's against him oh, okay. in the court. Uh, and it's the people versus Arthur Fleck. Mm-hmm. And um, basically, let me, let me make a long story short. He becomes the Joker in the court scene yeah. at, towards the end of the movie. Um, and it's when they bring out that um, the little person, Gary, that he scared in the mm-hmm. first movie and told yes. him to go home because yes. he didn't have any qualms with him. Mm-hmm. Uh, he gets Gary up on the stand and he starts making fun of him the whole time yeah. because he's the Joker. And he's right. making fun of him the whole time. Right. And then it's when Gary's like, you're the only one that never made fun of me. And I... And I thought that you were my friend. Mm-hmm. And then that's when he's like, no further questions. Mm-hmm. And then and then that's when that's that's when he wants to drop the whole Joker persona. I see. Because okay. he sees what he's doing. For sure. And then then that's when the bomb goes off. Or is it the next it's the next court scene that the bomb goes off. But mm-hmm. basically the uh, his followers ki- like basically kidnap him from the courtroom. Yeah. And he's running from a guy that's dressed up as the Joker. Yeah. And I just think that imagery is so brilliant because mm-hmm. he's that's literally what he's been doing the whole movie. He's trying to run from who he is, who he was. Right. On TV. And it's just, I, I just think that's great. Yeah. And at, by the end of the movie, um, his followers are mad. Harley's, Harley jump, dumps him. His followers are mad. And in Arkham, uh, somebody tells him a joke, so to speak, and kills him. Right. And that's how the movie ends. Yeah. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, I can't, I, I don't want to say too much without watching it, obviously. But when I, it does come to Max, I will be watching it and I'll give my score. From what you, from what you heard me say, what do you think? I just, if that's the point, I, I just, like, I, I just, hard to explain but I just don't understand necessarily what the point is I guess right like I understand sort of what Phillips was trying to go for with being like 
well, people that were looking at this as the Joker and sort of looking at this as a, not as a character to look up to, but sort of as a character as sort of a model, you know? Mm-hmm. He, you know, clearly that's not what he wanted to do. I get that. But, like, I, I just... I don't know. And I and it really feels pointless. I, I know this part, where the movie sort of begins in the same place that it ends. Mm-hmm. And to me, it makes me feel like the movie was kind of pointless. And I understand that we're killing off the character. I understand that we're killing off the Arthur. I get it that we're... In this universe, we're killing this character. I get that. Yeah. But if we're going to start basically in the same place where we're going to end it, in in where it's basically a film where we're constantly running from that, I don't know if I'm into that, personally. I just feel like that as... like. Well, obviously, it's a movie that didn't need to happen in the first place. That I yes, um, and you can I can tell that Todd Phillips when they announced, oh yeah, we're gonna do a sequel. He was like, okay, well, there's there might be a couple things that I want to do. Yeah, but yeah. I'm gonna really try and stretch out the whole court case mm-hmm. for into two hours. Yeah, that's which I I understand it's. It's also just a giant tone shift. It's too. like, okay, the end of the first movie is the climax. If yep. you want the final action, falling action, not the final action, falling action yeah. and the ending, then you can watch the Joker. That's fully fine if we write it like that. We did. But he didn't, though. He wrote this. He did. He, are we going to, like, clearly he didn't fucking write it. Clearly he wrote part two, year, like, a couple years later. Right. But the thing is... He wrote he wrote the second one in a way where it is like falling action. Okay, but that's not his. But we're talking about Todd Phillips here. Okay. Yeah. Okay. The the same guy that wrote Hangover Three. Yeah. <laughs> right. So we have this guy that wrote Hangover Three. Uh huh. Do we re- like? That's fine if he if he wrote the second film in that way. But if the first film doesn't necessarily set up that way, it doesn't necessarily it, work it, for me. It doesn't set up. It. I mean, it doesn't really set up anything. But yeah. it could. That's the thing. It could, if you look at yeah, it. Yeah, it's hard for me to be like it does because or doesn't end, without. The end of that movie is on such a high note; it doesn't really mm-hmm. get to really fall off that much. Yeah, and I think that's that's when he realized, okay, well, maybe I can just kind of continue the story in a way where it's like I'm finishing the story. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of the way they did it because they brought up, they brought back a lot of characters from the first movie that witnessed a lot of things and had them in court. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah, and then mention, oh, well, he has a different personality called the Joker, and he's he's just a really mentally ill guy, and uh, trying to play that card in court, and then Harley's trying to make him kill everybody in court because he's right. the Joker in her eyes. Right. I, I also just, like, I, like, I'm fine with a tone shift in a film like this, but I, I just... Why? I wouldn't call it tone shift, but it just sounds. It just. I, I know that they're not similar movies, right? Like, would you agree with that or no? They have the same tone. Okay, but they're different. <clears throat> they have different story elements. Yeah, it's just. I, I don't know. I, I. It's so hard for me to judge it without actually seeing it. Right. You need to watch. I, it I need to. I need to watch it, and then who knows? Maybe I'll love it. I, but there, there was other things that came out around this time when the movie dropped where things came out where it was like, oh, yeah, Todd Phillips wanted to have uh, Arthur uh, permanently fucking uh, mark the smile on his face. But they told him no because they're like, that's a dumb fucking idea. And he fought it and he tried to fight about it. Yep. And it's yep. like – and he did the same thing here. But this time he didn't, have a, he didn't have a higher director than him to tell him no. The only person he had was James Gunn. And yep. like James Gunn isn't – let him do it. Let him do whatever he wants. James Gunn, and also James Gunn isn't the type of guy to be like, no, we're fucking doing this. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, he's not. Yeah, if yeah, and that's what he said in, when he first started <clears throat> DC Studios. He was yep. like, every filmmaker is going to have their vision. Yep. Um, and yep. I, and regret, like, if it, if it messed, because the thing is, it's in a separate universe, so. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't matter. discrepancies right. with canon don't matter. Mm-hmm. So. Which, that, that I'm fine with, you know, but it's like. I just wish that Phillips would realize, too, because he's always been like this. He's always been one of these people that thinks that he's way better at making a film than he is. Like, he's always thought that with everything he's made. He's th- he thought that, like, Road Trip is a 10 out of 10. So, basically, he's the Steve Jobs. He is. He's the Steve directors. Jobs of movie directors. Because we just watched Steve the, Jobs. Yep, we just watched Steve Jobs. <laughs> and, and, like, 
it's sort of the same thing. He can't take no for an answer, and he can't take criticism. He, he just can't. He's always been that way. That's why, that's why Hangover 3 is the way that it is. Because he makes two movies, and Warner Brothers is like, we'll give you the keys. Because he's a money cow, right? You know what I mean? Like, both, the same thing happened with Hangover 1 and Part 2. Made a ton of money, right? And, and, and what does Warner Brothers do? They're like, well, he can't do no wrong, right? Give him the fucking keys to the castle. Yep. Let, let him make what he wants to make. Exactly. And they did the same thing with Joker. Because yep. Joker did well. Exactly. Made a billion dollars. Mm-hmm. Here's Joker 2. You get a $200 million budget for a movie that shouldn't even have that big of a budget. No, for real. For real. It really shouldn't. But. And it, if, they, if they made the budget just a little mm-hmm. smaller, it would have made money. It did not make that yep. much money. Did really? it make anything, or was it a loss? I think it was a loss. That wouldn't surprise me. Um, People were walking out of that movie. <laughs> well, they still bought the ticket. That's true. Um, I hate when people do that, regardless of how bad a movie is. I agree. I can't, I've never I, walked out of I a movie. I can't fathom walking out of a movie. That I paid for? You can't have a full opinion on a movie unless you fully watch it. That I agree with. Yeah, that I agree with. Um, but, yeah, regardless... It lost money, and it went to. It came out on digital a week, a month later. Yeah. Yep. Like they had no faith in this movie. No. I don't even think they marketed it that well. No, they they absolutely didn't. But can you blame them? <laughs> like if if people like James like James Gunn thought that the Flash was one of his favorite comic book movies. I still am struggling. I'm still struggling with that man, and it's like if even James Gunn is like, dude, you need to like. Like, James Gunn is just a really nice guy. Like, you can tell that. Like, he's not going to tell you your movie shit. But, like, if he's like, dude, you need to you need to, you need need to, to do something about this, and you go, no, I think it's perfect. You know. But, yeah. Look, I haven't seen it, so who knows? Maybe I'll come back in a couple weeks and be like, yo, 10 out of 10. Strongly suggest you watch the first one as, like, a double feature. Okay, if I'll do that. If you a chance then. to do that. Well, if it comes, to, yeah, if it comes to Max, I'll do it. I'll fucking... I'm sure it'll come. Honestly, we'll do it as an experience together. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm fine with that. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm down with that. Mm-hmm. Um, do you have anything else you want to talk about? I don't think so. I don't think there's anything else on the, on no. the top of list for this one. No. Well, anyways, ladies and gentlemen, thank you all so much for checking out the first episode of It's the Freaking Batman podcast. It's the Freaking Bat podcast mm-hmm. anyways ladies and gentlemen like always there's a link to buy w energy with our code sigma 934 for 10% off of anything on their website uh, we got uh, I have three energy flavors and one hydration formula yep yep Bruce endorses it uh, and uh, also there's a link to join our discord it is free we hang out in there we chat with you guys it's great you get sneak peeks to videos you help us pick out video ideas you get to know what you get to know when we're what we're working on sometimes they'll be like hey what do you guys like do you like the shorts do you like the live streams I talk in there we talk in there but anyways ladies and gentlemen thank you all so much for watching we hope to see you here next week for it's the freaking bat podcast see ya <laughs> <laughs>